Welcome back everybody. Um, I hope you all had a very nice week and as promised today we are going to do a tool along for this little skull. I will have this pattern available for free on my website. Um, I'll put a link in the description below and if you tuned in last week you saw um, we made our little stencil and I showed you how to transfer it onto your properly cased leather. Now I've recased this and we're ready to go so let's get down to it. Um, First of all, we will talk about swivel knives for a few seconds. Um, I know we've covered it, but prior to any work, you want to make sure you strop your knife so it is nice and sharp. And I will try to do that without shaking my table too much. <laughs> so I'm just using a compound on a piece of veg tan and just working my knife at the angle that the blade is at, back and forth a few times till it is nice and sharp. And this is a fairly simple pattern, so, um, I mean, cutting the lines don't really take all that long. And this is one that I've done quite a lot of, so I may work a little bit quickly. Um, take your time, you know, it's, it takes a bit of practice. This is something I do full time, so I work all day, every day, seven days a week on leather craft, so... Um, yeah, I definitely get a lot of practice in. <laughs> and with this download, uh, there is free reign. You know, you can make whatever you want with it. You can sell your pieces. There's no sort of license. It's really just a simple little skull and crossbones. You know, personally, I like to mostly cut kind of away from myself. It's just comfortable. For me, um, I know some people prefer to only cut a certain direction. I find with this yokeless swivel knife too, though, it is <clears throat> also quite easy to control and switch that up too. It, it, like I've said thousands of times, it is much like drawing with a, a pen or a pencil, but it's not everybody's cup of tea. I've had some people tell me that they do not like these knives at all, and it all just comes down to personal preference and finding out what you like to use and going with that. You know, like this is, I'm only sharing the things that I have used and learned in my own sort of leather craft journey, so everything that I say is not necessarily <laughs> the only way to do it. Hopefully you can take what I tell you, you know, kind of use it and uh, work your own sort of techniques and stuff in. When you're doing something small, like the little teeth, just take your time. You know, it's just simple little curves. You don't necessarily have to cut the whole curve in one pass. You know, you can start kind of in the middle and just cut one way and then cut the other way if you find that's more comfortable. And there we go. Like I said, pretty simple, very quick little swivel knife cuts. Um, now we can move on to tooling this. So for this one, um, I'm gonna bring out, so I'll use the heavy checked beveler around the outside. Um, as I said, I've like, I like to make mine pretty bold and sort of stand out. Um, you're free to use any, any beveler you want really. On the inside, I'll be using the horizontal striped one. And then also a matting stamp for the eyes and the nose and just a smooth pear shader. So let's get down to it. So as I've said in the past, I prefer like a really sort of bold outline around my pieces. So that's why I, I choose to use the heavy check beveler. You, I mean, you're free to use a smooth one whatever you want. Um, I'm just hoping to, you know, give you guys a little bit of a base to work with and I'd love to see where you all take it, you know, use it, use different bevelers, use some different techniques. At the end of this video, I'll show you one, um, one little sort of card slip that I did with the same skull, only, um, I did a completely different sort of tooling technique to it. This is just to get you basic idea and get going.
And so I'm just <laughs> slowly working my way around. You know, spin your piece if you have to. You can anchor it also if you'd like to. Um, I like to, I've gotten asked about the double tap that I do. Um, some of it's out of habit. You know, some of it's like a little bit of a compulsive behavior, I suppose, if you <laughs> want. Um, I personally, I like to just sort of set the stamp, like the first tap is to get the stamp where I want it. And then the second is to kind of drive it home. If that, hopefully that makes sense. That's just the best way that I can explain it. It's not necessarily a common technique. I don't know, maybe it is. Maybe some of you guys do it. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, it's just the way I do it. And as you can see, like I said, this is a fairly simple project. You can get around these things fairly quickly. So these are good for little, you know, little card slips. You could put this on a larger wallet. You could use it as, you know, you can add roses around it. You can really do anything with it. So when I'm getting into sort of little smaller pockets there is when I'm using the smaller of the two. I have a slanted desk, so I'm constantly <laughs> trying to make sure things aren't rolling away from me here. So the reason I like to work so slowly with the heavy check beveler as well is I like to make sure that it's making a nice, even sort of bevel all the way around. Um, there's not a lot of like weird overlap. The little check marks are staying the same size throughout. So if you overlap it too much, what you're going to end up doing is creating a little bit of like a smaller check mark, if that makes sense. Um, I know some people aren't as concerned with those kind of details and that's, you know, oops, totally up to you. It's just, uh, it's just the way that I personally work and like this to look when it's all done. And there's no right or wrong. It's, it's only art. <laughs> so there we go. That's it. That's all the heavy check beveler work. Um, from there, what I'm going to do, I also am going to use a modeling spoon, as I've explained in the past. Uh, I prefer this over a smooth beveler myself. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around these little areas where I would normally, I mean, or like other people might use a smooth beveler. And I'm just going to put a little bit of a bevel in there. I hold it at about a 45 degree angle and just sort of sculpt the leather down with it. Um, these areas where, you know, the skull meets the little, um, like over the bones, that's when I'll go in with my sort of vertical beveler and just, you know, really push that little bone into the background. As you can see, it doesn't take much. It's just a couple little taps and it adds a lot of depth. I will actually also go over I know I just smoothed it out with the modeling spoon, but you know, like I said, these things, there isn't really any sort of cut and dry way to do it. As you work, you know, you'll change your mind. It's totally cool. I do want to just sort of add a little bit extra depth, so I will use a textured beveler to sort of do that. And then I'm going to work my way around the little jaw there. And 
and I will take my smaller of the two to bring out the teeth. And I'm just very, very gently tapping along the outside of their little teeth. I'll also use the same beveler to sort of sharpen the details in the little crossbones too. You're beveling on the side of the line that you want to draw out, or sorry, so you'll go on the back side of this line because you'll want to push sort of that into looking like it's in the background and this is in the foreground. And so um, <laughs> I'm not always the best at explaining how or why, but <laughs> we'll get we'll get there. Basically, whichever part you want to sit forward, you'll bevel the opposite side of that cut line that you've made. Now, from here, um, I'm going to use this little sort of matting one that we talked about. And what it's going to do is it's going to really darken out those eyes. You know, with a skull, it's obviously a big recess. So when you go in there with your antique or paint or whatever, it's just going to look like it's dark and empty. <laughs> Which I know sounds like super dark on its own. That's definitely not my intention. And you really want to try and stay within your swivel lines there. Um, and then once I get everything sort of matted out, I will go over just to make sure the surface is nice and even. You know, you're not getting a lot of like lumps and bumps. So it usually takes a couple, couple passes. And when I get into, because I don't have a ton of stamps, this is the only one of this size, um, what I will do is, because this is a little bit smaller, I put my finger on the back side of the stamp. Um, <laughs> you know, you got to suffer for your art a little bit, right? And I'll just slowly tap it in there. And what it's going to do is it's going to keep the back of the stamp from hitting the area that you don't want it to hit. I don't really know if that's an official <laughs> tooling technique or not. Like I said, it's just a matter of me not being able to afford a ton of stamps and kind of working with what I got. And it's worked pretty well for the last year and a half, so I just kind of go with it. <laughs> and then from there, I'm going to take the pear shader and just sculpt out around the eyebrows a little bit nothing too crazy we're gonna push this down a little bit more you can also do this with your modeling spoon I just I really like these pear shaders and so you just want to start giving your skull a little bit of character I'll kind of hit the bones a bit, you know, push them down a little, just give them a little bit of structure. <laughs> Sorry, so you'll have to excuse my camera setup isn't all that spectacular at the moment. <laughs> I will try to keep an eye on angles and things. And so again, I'm just very lightly tapping with this pear shader and 
just very slowly sculpting out a bit of dimension. So what I'm going to do is areas like this um, that'll that would normally you know sit in. I'm going to tamp them down a bit further and leave this stuff just you know the natural height that the leather's at. I don't know. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> but it will give the illusion of roundness. Give him a little bit of a chin, if you'd like. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little modeling spoon and I'm just going to sort of open up and like bold out the lines between the teeth. You don't really want to go in there with a beveler. I think it just it would be a little bit much. I mean, it's definitely worth a try, but I just use this as kind of, you know, a little final, final detail work. And that's really it. Like I said, this is a very quick, sort of simple project. So one thing I like to do when I am pretty much finished a project is I will give it a little bit of a spray with water again, not to soak it down, just to even out the color. So you can really see, it gives you like a little bit of a sense of what your final look is gonna be. Um, and then you're able to, you know, go back and if you find any little details, you'd kind of like to work back in a little bit more, like these little teeth, I might kind of just define that a little bit better. You know, again, it's a skull, like it's an organic shape. There's really no right or wrong way to do this. So now that the tooling's all done, um, if you were to dye this, um, I would suggest doing a layer of Neat's Foot Oil, letting it sort of absorb overnight. Um, this will, you know, sort of combat any of the alcohol and drying things that are in most dyes. Of course, if you're using an oil dye, not always necessary. It's just a step that I personally like to take. This one, I think maybe um, I will paint it. So next week's video will be sort of just a little short painting tutorial. Um, I'll go over some of the paints and products I like to use, as well as I'll show you how to antique it. Um, like I said, there's lots of things you can do with this little pattern. This is a card slip uh, I did months back. And so what I actually did was I swivel cut all around the outline. And then I just used a backgrounding stamp to sort of give it that effect. So yeah, get creative with it. You know, add some roses and stuff behind it. Whatever you want. Um, I really look forward to seeing what everybody creates with this free pattern. And I thank you for following along. And I look forward to seeing your, your projects. So, you know, feel free to shoot me a message over on Instagram. Or, you know, tag me in your posts. And uh, happy crafting. I'll see you guys.